if you wait long enough, we know from the geological record that asteroid and comet impacts really do happen. We need to go out and we need to track individual objects. We need to do a good, thorough survey. That's the goal of the Near-Earth Object Surveyor Mission. Searches for asteroids and comets have come a long way in the last 30 years or so. It used to be that uh, we knew of them mostly from looking at photographic plates and trying to spot things that are moving between different photographic exposures of the sky. As you can imagine, that's really hard to do. Nowadays, of course, we have modern computing and we have modern camera chips. This has made all the difference. So today, we have a network of ground-based telescopes and one space telescope that are searching the skies for asteroids and comets that can get close. However, in order to really advance what we know and find a lot more objects, we need to be able to detect them when they're further away from us. To do that, we need more sensitive telescopes. So what we are getting a first look at here is the enclosure that will house the Near-Earth Object Surveyor Telescope. The key advantages that this telescope will offer are that it's in space, so there's no day or night time. We can observe pretty much all the time, continuously and it'll operate at infrared wavelengths. And it turns out that asteroids get warmed up by the sun and then they re-radiate that energy as infrared light or heat. So with the, the Near-Earth Object Surveyor mission, the goal is to actually sense their heat emission. And that's a complementary capability to the ground-based telescopes which observe invisible light. They see sunlight reflecting off the surfaces of the objects. We will be searching for them using their thermal emission, their heat that they give off. It means that we are sensitive to objects that might be very dark on their surfaces. We know that some of the asteroids have very dark, carbon-rich surfaces. They're just really, really dark, like printer toner. We can spot them with infrared light. They're harder to see with a visible light telescope because they're so dim. In addition to all of that, we'll also be building a very tall sunshade on the telescope. So in other words, we're really gonna be trying to block out the light from the sun because we wanna look close to the sun. The reason for this is we want to spot the objects as far away around the Earth's orbit as we can. The asteroids that pose the greatest hazard to the Earth from a collision standpoint typically spend a lot of time close to the Earth's orbit. It kind of makes sense. That's where we really wanna spend our time looking. These are regions on the sky that are just harder to get at with a ground-based telescope because the sky is bright, especially as you get close to the sun. So by putting our telescope in space, putting up a tall sunshade, we can look close and kind of peer around the orbit of the Earth to try to spot the objects in the most hazardous orbits. Problems like these are hard for us, in my opinion, as human beings to kind of grapple with. Because they are rare, it is easy to just ignore it. And then it's out of sight, out of mind until something happens. We really want to try to find the objects well in advance of any potential close approach. That's the fundamental goal here. Why do we want to do that? Because the more time we have, the more options we have to actually do something about it if we ever did spot something that truly looks like it's going to impact the Earth. And from my standpoint, the best thing that can happen is we do these big thorough searches and we don't find anything hazardous. But along the way, we'll learn a lot about our nearest neighbors, how our solar system got here, and all kinds of other wonderful science about the universe. But I think most of all, uh, it's just really a lot of fun to get to find and chase asteroids wherever they go.